Please use the link below to get the notes, questions and other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share to others for our daily new videos. So we have crossed the tropical cycle. We need now to look at um, some another aspect which we refer to as region climate. And in this case, we need to understand that we are looking at the factors that are influencing the climate of South Africa. And if we look at the factors that are influencing the climate of South Africa, we must know that South Africa is number one, having the influence of oceans. And these oceans are in two categories. We have the warm Mozambique currents, okay? And we also have the cold Bangura current. Somewhere down there, we have what we call the warm Algas currents. And what happens is that the warm Mozambique currents are, are now going to influence the warm moist conditions on the east side of the country. And the cold dry conditions are also going to be experienced on the west side of the country. Because of that, we have what we call um, the second aspect that we have besides the influence of the ocean currents, we have what we call the subtropical anticyclones. Just like you hear the word anticyclones, these are high pressure systems that are affecting South Africa. There are three. The first one is you have the South Indian high pressure system or the South Indian high pressure, which is found on the Indian Ocean, okay? We also have the South Atlantic, which is found on the Atlantic Ocean. Then somewhere here inside Africa or inside South Africa, we have the Karahari. Sometimes we call it the continental high pressure system. Because they're all high pressure system, what is their rotation? They rotate anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, what do we mean? This is the anti-clockwise rotation. This is the anti-clockwise rotation. So even this one, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. It is opposite to the low pressure. Remember the low pressure, we say it, it's clockwise. So this one is anti-clockwise. So South Africa is affected by these three high pressure systems. I want you to see, this is the rotation. Anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, okay? So this and this, the South Atlantic and the South Indian, they move vertically, and they move north and south to and from the equator because they move with the apparent movement of the sun. So that when it is winter in the Southern hemisphere, this high pressure system move close to South Africa. And when it is summer, they move southwards and they move far away from South Africa. Okay. Number three, we have what you call the plateau low temperature, lower temperature, which is dry. In this case, we have the escarpment here. And this escarpment is also influencing the climate. We shall look at it when you're looking at the big winds. Okay. So these subtropical anticyclones, what are they? What are their characteristics? High pressure, high pressure cells, what are their characteristics? A is descending, massive A is descending. And you know that when A descending, it warms adiabatically, meaning that every 100 meters, the temperatures are increasing by one degree. I can try to show you this lamas. This is the earth's surface. This is the descending A. Why is it warming adiabatically? As it descends here, I'll say 20, 20 degrees. Here is 30 degrees. Here is maybe 35 degrees. As it is descending downwards, it's warming. Why? Because when it is descending downwards, there is compression and there is friction. This air is warming up. And when it warms up, there is evaporation. 
in the process of evaporation, the moisture is lost. So the air is going to reach down the earth's surface when it is dry, because it has lost that, the, it, is, it is getting heated, it's warming up. So under that line, it is resulting in warming up as it is descending onto the earth's surface, okay? It also results into sunny and dry weather conditions. Sunny and dry weather conditions. Dry, why is it dry? Because there is evaporation. So we shall say cold air descends, okay? And when it descends, it warms, or we can say descends or sinks. When it descends, it warms. So as it warms, there is evaporation, okay? Then with this evaporation, there is sunny weather conditions are also going to be experienced because of the high pressure systems. Okay. Now we have the South Atlantic, South Atlantic high pressure system. Okay. Where do we find the South Atlantic high pressure system? We found the South Atlantic, we can say a South Atlantic anticyclone. Where do we find it? We find it on the eastern side of the country. Just like I showed you here, this is the South Atlantic high pressure system, okay? On the Western side of the country, okay? And therefore it blows cool, dry winds towards Cape Town. This one, remember Cape Town is a somewhere here, somewhere here. So these winds are passing over the cold Bangura currents, bringing those conditions which are dry and cool towards Western Cape, okay? Then we have the South Indian, which is blowing. Where do we find the South Indian? This is the South Indian here, okay? So what you must note with the South Indian, that they blow warm, moist winds on the east coast. Remember, it's found on the east. So as it is blowing, it is bringing these moist conditions on the east coast of the country of Southern Africa, okay? Then we have the Kalahari anticyclone. This one is responsible for the clear skies, warm temperatures, summer rains. So these ones, I will explain further about these two aspects when we reach here, okay? What happens here is that it is winter. This is explaining the winter aspects. This is explaining the summer aspects. What is happening here? That because it is winter, the interior is experiencing great mass of subsidizing cold air. And this subsidizing cold air, it seems that the, it means that the interior will be having a high pressure, okay? And here on the ocean here, remember this is the Indian Ocean, okay? And this Indian Ocean has got warm moist air that is leaving the Indian Ocean. So as this air descends, massive or intense descending cold air, it pushes the inversion layer below the escarpment. And when it pushes the inversion layer below the escarpment, it simply means that it is blocking, it is blocking the moist or moist warm air from this Indian Ocean from reaching the interior of South Africa. So because it is blocked, it will be condensing here, forming clouds somewhere here, forming rainfall this way on the ocean but there will be, we shall have no rainfall in the interior. That's why we say, that's why you see during winter, there's no rainfall, clear skies, and therefore there's uh, uh, those uh, winter conditions. So the interior won't have rainfall because the moist air can't reach the interior. It is blocked by the massive descending cold air, pushing the inversion layer to the escarpment. These are the conditions of winter. What happens in summer? We know that in winter, the Kalahari is very strong, but in summer, the Kalahari is very weak. So because the Kalahari is very weak, that means we have massive descending, we have less descending cold air. That means, I remember the Kalahari high pressure cell, for it, it moves vertically up, vertically down. It is not moving like uh, the South Indian and South Atlantic, which moves south and north depending on the movement of the ITCZ during different seasons. This one is moving up and down. And as it is moving up and down, it simply means vertically up, vertically down. During summer, it is moved, it is pushed 
further up, in other words, we shall say it is disappearing. Yes, there is a descending cold air, but it is less, very weak. So that means the inversion layer is above the escarpment. In the same scenario, we can also see that because it is summer, there is intensive heating of the interior. Therefore, there is a summer low in the interior and there is continental heating. This continental heating pushes the inversion layer to be above the escarpment. And in the same line, we shall have the fact that the warm moist air from uh, the Indian Ocean can be in position to move above the escarpment towards the interior of South Africa. Therefore, when it comes to the interior of South Africa, it is moist air. It has got latent heat embedded inside. It condenses in the upper atmosphere at the condensation level, forming cumulonimbus clouds, resulting into very heavy rainfall that we shall receive in the interior of South Africa during summer. That's why you see South Africa during summer experiences a heavy rainfall, whereby during winter, it experiences no rainfall at all. So this first diagram here is summarizing the scenario that is occurring in the winter season. Um, the moist air is blocked from reaching the interior, so there's no rainfall. And here, the moist air is left to move towards the interior because the inversion layer is pushed above the escarpment due to the intensive heating of the continent. And therefore, due to the intensive heating of the continent, and therefore, the moist air pushes this inversion layer above the escarpment, resulting into the formation of rainfall. So this scenario is for winter. This scenario here is for summer. OK? And therefore, this is what I've been explaining. The summer period, what do we have? The Karahali moves up. Remember, we said the Karahali during Karahali for it, it moves vertically up, vertically down. So the vertically up and vertically down results in giving, it helps to give space for the warm air from the Indian Ocean to reach the interior, causing inland rainfall. Okay. So in that summer season, we shall have um, the Karahali moves up. Okay. Inland is hot, and therefore the air rises causing thermal law in the interior, okay? The inversion layer is very high. Warm moist air can flow from the Indian Ocean causing rainfall. That is exactly what I've told you learners. This is the scenario of what is occurring in winter. The Karahali moves further down. Remember we said the Karahali moves vertically up, vertically down. So in the winter, it moves vertically down. So when it moves vertically down, what will happen? It pushes the inversion layer to be below or to be close to the ground. And because the inversion layer is close to the ground, it blocks warm moist air from uh, the Indian Ocean to reach the interior, which causes the dry and cold winters, frosts are on cloudless nights. That is the scenario. And this is the situation. Why during summer it, it comes? This is what happens during summer. And therefore, during summer, the inversion layer is below the escarpment. This warm air can't reach. It is prevented by this um, um, inversion layer because there is intense heat uh, descending cold air. This scenario is what is happening in, in, in summer. This air can escape. Remember, this air is moist and rich in moisture. Therefore, it reaches the interior without into thunders and lightning that is going to occur in the interior of South Africa. Those are the two aspects that I, I wanted to explain to you regarding the summers and the winters. Okay, now we also have what you call the line thunderstorm. Okay, we have what you call the line thunderstorm. Before I explain the line thunderstorm, learners, I want you to understand that line, line thunderstorm comes after the moisture front. If I go back here, I want you to look at this. Here we have the Kalahari high pressure system. This Kalahari high pressure system has resulted into cold, dry air that is moving towards the interior of South Africa. And the Kalahari Indian has resulted into the moist air that is moving towards the interior of South Africa. 
This most air, we call it the northeast trade winds, and this one becomes the southeast, the southwest. So when they move towards the interior, there is a point of uh, intersection. This point of intersection is what you call the moisture front along with this line. So along this moisture front, we shall experience the line thunderstorm. This is what I want you to look at. How does a line thunderstorm form? A line thunderstorm, we shall define it as an elongated low pressure that stretches from the northwest to the southeast of the country. Just like if you look at South Africa like this, here we have a line thunderstorm northwest stretching towards south east okay this is the line thunderstorm we call it a line thunderstorm because it is forming along a line okay a line thunderstorm develops in which season it develops in summer when the kalahari high pressure is far away from the ground remember we said the kalahari high pressure is very very weak during summer. How does it form? Its formation comes as a result of the northeasterly warm moist air that moves into the interior, okay, and the southwesterly cool dry air that moves into the interior. So they converge along a zone called the moisture front. You can see that, okay. Why do we call it a moisture front? We call it a moisture front because we have got these two air masses of different moisture content. We have the southwesterly, which is coming from the western side, which is cool and dry winds. And we also have the northeasterly, which is warm and moist. So these two air masses, the southwest and the northeasterly, have got different moisture content. The northeasterly is warm, the southwesterly is cool and dry. So the point of conversion is going to be in the interior. And this results into the moisture front. So along the moisture front, what happens? We are going to see that the warm moist air is pushed upwards by the cool, dry air. Remember, it's cool air. And we say, when you look at these two air masses, the warm one is light, the cold one is heavy. So the cold one can wedge underneath the warm one. The warm one is forced to rise. So when the warm one rises along the line, this results into the formation of um, a line thunderstorm, okay? So that's why we say it's a line thunderstorm. And along this line thunderstorm, when this warm air rises, it condenses, okay? And when it condenses, it results into heavy rainfall, lightning, hail occur. So what are the weather conditions along a moisture front or along the line thunderstorm? These are the weather conditions. Number one, we shall have heavy rain. This heavy rain comes with lightning, and we are also likely to have hail. Okay? And therefore, there is rapid condensation taking place along the line thunderstorm. Those are the weather conditions. Okay? So, you can find a question that is asking whether it is a curse or it is a blessing. In this case, if it's a curse, that means anything that is a curse is bad. It's a problem. So this heavy rainfall will result in the floods. Therefore, it is a curse. It becomes a problem. This heavy rainfall result into soil erosion. It's a curse because soil erosion takes away the fertile soils that farmers need most when they are cultivating crops. Heavy rainfall leads to destruction of crops. So we shall say it is a curse because crops are going to be destroyed. And when crops are destroyed, it simply means that many people are going to be facing starvation and hunger. In the same line, we said it has got lightning. This lightning can spark fire to the farmers. It can also uh, affect um, farmers' crops, even it kills people. It becomes a curse because of lightning. How is it a blessing? Something that is a blessing is good. Learners, I want you to understand when you say, ah, my friend, you're a blessing, it simply means if your friend is a blessing, he's a good friend to you. So something that is good, for example, filling dams. Dams will have water that can be used for irrigation. In the same line, we'll have enough water for domestic use. You want to bath at home, 
Eh? You use the water. You want to cook food at home. You use water. It is something that is good. Okay. Rains remove pollutants from the atmosphere. It is a blessing. Because, you know, uh, industries, cars, and so on, they pollute the environment. The pollution, uh, those are greenhouse gases, are going to be in the atmosphere. So when it rains, that rain tries to wash them away, and therefore it becomes a blessing to people. Now, look at this. I want you to look at this and analyze how it occurs. Number one, well, this is what you call the high pressure. And you said within the high pressure, air rotates anticlockwise. Can you see this anticlockwise rotation? And as it rotates anticlockwise, it is passing over the warm Mozambique currents, acquiring moisture or acquiring that warm condition. As it is passing, it is now coming towards the interior as the northeast. Remember, when you draw your compass here, this becomes the northeast altogether. So if this is the north, if these winds are traveling from northeast direction towards the interior. This is during when? During summer. We also have um, what happens. That is the eastern side. Therefore, we also have what happens on the western side. We have the Kalahari, Atala, uh, sorry, we have the South Atlantic high pressure. What is the rotation? The rotation is anticlockwise. Can you see that? But it is passing over the Banguera currents. Remember, the Banguera currents are cold. Therefore, it acquires the cold, dry conditions. Where is it pushing? It is pushing towards the interior. And it is bringing this cold, dry air towards the interior. What will happen? At this point here, we have a moisture front forming along the interior or within the interior. So this moisture front is because... Um, this moisture front is because we have got different moisture content. So we shall have the formation of cloud. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess that ignorance is bliss. So